What's up everyone? I'm Marilee Blair and I'm a serious travel addict as I've been to 54 countries so far. And today I'm going to talk to you about North Island, New Zealand. And remember, if you need help planning your trip or you wanna buy any of my travel services on Patreon, I will include that link in the description of this video. New Zealand is a stunning island nation located in the Southwestern Pacific Ocean. It consists of two main land masses, the North Island and the South Island, as well as numerous smaller islands. Known for its breathtaking landscapes, diverse wildlife, and a unique Maori culture, New Zealand is a popular destination for travelers seeking outdoor adventures and natural beauty. Auckland is known for its stunning natural beauty and unique geographical features. The city is surrounded by picturesque harbors, including the White Meta Harbor and the Manuka Harbor. I went to New Zealand on my birthday trip back in April 2018 for five days and four nights. So here are some of my travel tips for where to stay, helpful tips, things to do, and food recommendations. Airbnbs. The first Airbnb we stayed at was in Auckland, so we could explore that part of New Zealand for three days and two nights at an amazing Airbnb that is a guest house and it cost us $153.82. It was such a cute Airbnb with a great price and it included a kitchen, fridge, a little outdoor area, a couch to hang out with a separate room from the bedroom, so it was a perfect amount of space for me and Mike. And the hosts were amazing. They were such kind people. People. They knew that I was celebrating my birthday, so they had a New Zealand bottle of wine for us with a note waiting for me when we arrived. And they even took the time to meet us and give us local recommendations. They were the kindest people, and I will make sure to include that Airbnb link in the description of this video. The second Airbnb we stayed at was a guest house in Hamarana, Rotura. And we chose it mainly for location since it was closer to the other things we wanted to do like Hobbiton, the Waitomo Worm Caves, and the Geothermal pools and it was great for what we needed for location and it was near this really pretty bluish green lake that I wanted to see while we were there. The cost was $100.18 for three days and two nights, which is a great deal for those two nights. And they included a light breakfast, which was really nice of the Airbnb host to do. So I will make sure to include the link for that Airbnb as well. Here are my top 10 things to do on the North Island of New Zealand. Number one, visit Hobbiton. It's the famous Hobbiton movie set in Matama, where the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogies were filmed. You can take a guided tour to immerse yourself in the fantasy world of Middle Earth in the heart of the Waikoto region. You will step into the lush pastures of the Shire and will take a short bus ride through the beauty of the land. Your guide will then escort you on a shared walking tour around the movie set of the beautiful Hobbit houses, showing the intricate detailing, pointing out the most famous locations, and explaining how the movie magic was made. And after you finish enjoying this 12-acre set, you will receive a complimentary exclusive Hobbit drink to end your fun adventure. Mike and I had so much fun in this fantasy land, taking photos and pretending we bought a Hobbit house here. Cost was $89 per person for this two hour tour. Number two, discover Rotura. Experience the geothermal wonders of Rotura on the North Island by visiting geysers, hot springs, and mud pools at places like Waiotapu Thermal Wonderland. The Waiotupo Thermal Wonderland was amazing to see in person. It was named one of the 20 most surreal places in the world. Thousands of years in the making and visitors can choose one or all three walks, which take between 45 to 90 minutes. It includes the famous champagne pool and devil's bath, along with other beautiful and naturally colored springs, bubbling mud, steaming ground, expansive vistas, and huge volcanic craters. Cost is $32.50 per person. Number three, the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. Discover the magical underground world of the Waitomo Caves, where you can take a boat ride through the caves illuminated by thousands of glowworms. It's known as one of New Zealand's best natural attractions, and you get to take a boat ride through the glowworm grotto, marvel at thousands of magical glowworms, and become part of over 130 years of cultural and natural history. It's so similar to the bioluminescent phenomenon, but made up of these beautiful glowworms. While you are here, you can also explore two other caves by foot, which is the Rukuri Cave and the Aruni Cave. 
Each cave is uniquely magical and comes with its own history and culture. Cost for the Waitomo Glowworm Cave is 61 NZD per person. Mike and I love the Glowworm Cave so much. It was so pretty to see all the beautiful blue glowworms captivating the dark cave. So I highly recommend doing it and buy the photos. It's so worth it since you can't really get as good of footage. So make sure to buy them like we did. Number four, the Sky Tower. It's one of Auckland's most prominent landmarks and a popular tourist attraction. It's located in the city center and offers breathtaking views of the city and its surroundings. Number five, Mount Eden. It's one of Auckland's most iconic volcanic cones and a popular destination for hikers and tourists. The primary attraction of Mount Eden is the panoramic view from its summit. At 196 meters, 643 feet above sea level, it offers one of the best viewpoints in Auckland. You can see the entire city, including the skyline, the Auckland Harbor, and the Haruki Gulf. What sets Mount Eden apart from other Auckland volcanic cones is its impressive crater. The crater is quite deep and features a lush grassy floor. It's a fascinating geological feature to explore and provides a unique perspective on the volcano history of the area. We absolutely love this hike and the views of Auckland here so much. Number six, Takapuna Beach. It offers a blend of relaxation and recreational opportunities, making it a versatile destination suitable for sunbathers, water sport enthusiasts, families, and anyone looking to enjoy the beauty of the Auckland coastline. Whether you want to take a dip in the sea, try water sports, or simply just relax, Tepakuna Beach has something for everyone, and they have a really cool swing that you can take pictures on like I did. Number seven, bungee jumping in Queenstown. Queenstown is the adventure capital of the world, so you could try bungee jumping at the famous Kawaru Bridge or other thrilling activities like skydiving, jet boating, and white water rafting. Number eight, the Hookah Falls. They're the largest falls on the Waikato River near Tapu on New Zealand's North Island. It is the most visited natural attraction in New Zealand. Number nine, Tapua. Encounter the Southern Hemisphere's largest natural geyser, Pahutu Geyser, which naturally erupts skyward over 15 times during a day. This is New Zealand's most famous geyser and it is a sight to enjoy. And it's one of New Zealand's most amazing geothermal wonderlands and Maori cultural centers. Number 10, Hell's Gate Geothermal Reserve and Mud Spa. Bathe in Rotura's healing geothermal waters and naturally hot and therapeutic waters. They're perfect for relaxation, health, wellness, and beauty. You should definitely enjoy this one or some other natural hot springs while you are here. It's a great way to rejuvenate and relax before heading back home. Food. Food in New Zealand offers a unique and diverse culinary scene influenced by the country's natural resources, cultural heritage, and immigrant communities. When visiting New Zealand, be sure to try some of these delicious foods and dishes. Number one, the pavlova, a popular dessert in New Zealand and Australia. Pavlova is a merengue-based cake with a crispy exterior and a soft marshmallow-like interior. It's typically topped with whipped cream and fresh fruits like kiwi fruit, strawberries, and passion fruit. Number two, kiwi fruit. New Zealand is famous for its kiwi fruit, and you can enjoy this sweet and tangy fruit fresh or in various dishes and desserts. Number three, pies. You have to have a pie. New Zealanders love their savory pies, which are often filled with minced meat, such as steak or lamb, vegetables, and gravy. So you have to try a classic mince and cheese pie. Number four, white bait. White bait are tiny, delicate fish that are often pan fried in butter and served on toast. They are a delicacy in New Zealand and are typically enjoyed in sharing. Number five, lamb. New Zealand is known for its high quality lamb meat. Try lamb dishes, whether it's rack of lamb, lamb chops, or lamb shakes slow cooked in a rich sauce. Number six, Hokey Pokey Ice Cream. Hokey Pokey Ice Cream is a popular New Zealand flavor featuring vanilla ice cream with pieces of honeycomb toffee. It's sweet, 
crunchy and delicious. And you have to have LNP called Lemon in Parora. It's a famous New Zealand soft drink known for its lemony flavor and distinctive taste. It's a refreshing beverage to try during your visit. And you have to try fish and chips. In New Zealand, they have their own special take on fish and chips where you'll find delicious battered or crumbed fish served with thick cut fries and often accompanied by tartar sauce. And you need to have kumara. Kumara are New Zealand sweet potatoes, known as kumara. They're the staple in Kiwi cuisine. They can be roasted, mashed, or used in various dishes. Get a burger with beetroot. Many New Zealand burger joints include sliced beetroot in their burgers, adding a sweet and earthy element to the flavor. And for my coffee lovers, you got to try a flat white coffee. Enjoy a cup of New Zealand's famous flat white coffee made with espresso and steamed milk. It's a kiwi favorite and known for its smooth velvety texture. The coffee's so good in New Zealand. And of course, last but not least, Manuka honey. You have to have Manuka honey. New Zealand is famous for its high quality Manuka honey, which has unique antibacterial properties. You can enjoy it on toast, in drinks, or as a natural sweetener. Transportation. Definitely rent a car. Things are really far from each other on the North Island. So it was easiest for us to just rent a car to go everywhere we needed to go. And since Rotura is farther from Auckland, again, the rental car came in handy. We booked our rental car with Hitch Car Rentals at the Auckland airport, which was really easy. We picked it up at the airport and dropped it off. Convenience is key with a rental car. Currency. The New Zealand dollar is the official currency and legal tender of New Zealand. So make sure to get some money in their currency for tipping on tours. But for things like the hotel, rental car, and restaurants, we mainly use my Chase Sapphire Reserve credit card because it acts as a travel insurance and there are no foreign fees. So I will make sure to include my Chase credit card affiliate link in the description of this video so you can get some bonus points for signing up too. Thank you all for exploring the world, one video at a time with me, your own personal bougie budgeter. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and look for brand new episodes every Wednesday. And for all helpful info I mentioned or to book any of my travel services on Patreon, read them in my description below.